Hello, this is Henry Schaefer, and welcome to Old and New Testament Survey. It is a summary of the books of the Old and the New Testament. Now, what you're going to get here, you're going to get some unique insight concerning each book of the Bible, key verses that will just jump out at you and bring new revelation to you, relevant truth for today, some special notes that I have dictated and put in my Bible over the years that I have studied. Also, there's going to be a, it will be a brief but comprehensive summary of each book. Now, you can also look for some wow moments uh, of revelation of truth that we're going to give you. Now, if you're ready to start out on Old and New Testament survey, come on and join us. Man, we're going to have a great time studying the Bible together. Okay, everybody, let's go ahead and begin. Everybody glad to be in the house of the Lord. Shout amen. amen. All right, we're going to be talking about the minor prophets tonight. We're going to start off. Our first one we're going to be talking about is Hosea. Let me give you a little introduction to the minor prophets. She's passing out the paper right now. Minor prophets. They, before before you, don't, you don't even know it. don't even know the answer. So if you learn, well, you might know it. But if you don't know it, then you can say, well, at least I came to church tonight and I remember. Don't look at your paper. Flip your papers over, everybody. Don't look at it. How many minor prophets are there? No idea. Eight. He got it because he counted what was on the board up here. So, very good, Bill. I should have told him to close her eyes. I got it on the board in here. So there are 12 minor prophets. So if you don't learn anything tonight, you learn how many minor prophets are there? 12. See what I'm talking about? Isn't that worth coming tonight? That might be the question to do what? Get into heaven. Huh? And if that is the question, I know this whole class is going to make it in, right? You will not have to worry about it. You have been... Hey, and, and listen Hey, and listen at this here. You know, one of the things that we try to... I don't know if how you would emphasize this, but when you are assigned to a church, I mean, it's like... Like, that's what I... I mean, I, I have an assignment here. Well, you have an assignment too. So here's what I want you to always understand this here. You know, sometimes people come on Sunday morning... And sometimes they come on Wednesday night, and then when we used to have evening service, you know, they come or they didn't come, or it's not that important. But let me let me share something very important to you. Everything that you need to be perfected and to stand before Jesus comes through the church. It comes through the ministry. Everything you need to be whole, perfect, and complete comes through the ministries that we have here yes. and when we minister on Sunday morning Wednesday and so the things I can, I, it's hard for me to imagine that, that well what did they talk about Wednesday night right. <laughs> Look, you know, ain't, no, ain't no big deal or what did we talk about Sunday you were here not Sunday but you don't know what happened Sunday and you realize if you once you understand that everything that you need dude I need to beat the dead horse <laughs> Am I riding a hobby horse? That might be my hobby horse from now on for the twenty the rest of twenty. Twenty nineteen. What do y'all think? So we're talking about the minor prophets. So look at the paper you have here in front of you. The common title of these twelve books of the English Bible is Minor Prophets. The title originated in Augustine's time, late fourth century, but they are only minor in that they are much shorter. Then the prophecies of Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and what's the other one? Daniel. Daniel, called the major prophets. So every one of these books have certain features about them. Of course, the common themes of the minor prophets are, well, there's five there, warnings of impending judgment, the description of sin, the description of coming judgment, a call for repentance, and a promise for future deliverance. The chronological overview of the minor prophets are now I think I think when I re, when I study all of this here that um, 
I'm going to tell you if they're in chronological order. If I say that, I think there's one or two that's out of order, but I'm going to read what it says. Uh, they're order in the English Bible. That, I'll give it to you like that. Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah. What's the number five? Jonah. Number six, help me out. Micah. Seven. Nahum. Look at number eight. Everybody say it together. Habakkuk. 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 Number nine. Zephaniah. Number ten. Haggai. 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 Eleven. Zechariah. And Malachi. Malachi. Now, I don't know if just by going through the studies that we have, it's easier for me now to go through my Bible and flip to see this, this is where they're at. Do you know what I'm talking about? The, we, we, I know, oh, this was after this one, this one's after that. Or am I the only one having to do that? Yeah, I do that. No, it makes it easier now. It makes it easier. Knowing where they're at in the Bible. I'm going to see how it works out, though, with these last 12. Doing it with the last 12. Everybody ready to begin? Yes, Let's talk about uh, Hosea. So, you'll hear the, someone speak of the word Hoshea. You might hear that name. They'll go, what? They're talking about Hosea. That's the English pronunciation of it. <clears throat> Let's look at it here. I got to get my Bible open. Everybody got their Bible. I don't know how many I'm going to do tonight. I'm gonna, you know, I, you know how I'm going I'm to try to get several of these done here tonight. You know, it's kind of hard sometimes to find it with a thumb index. Bible as well, isn't it? <clears throat> yes. Let's look at it here at Hosea. Hosea's theme or Jose is preserving love. Look at the author as declared in verse 1. The author is Hosea. So let's do this here before we begin. Which book of the prophets minor prophets do you think because I haven't told you this here yet. Do you think does not tell you who wrote the book? That would be a little quiz. There's one of the twelve that it doesn't tell you who wrote it. And so we're going to answer that question maybe sometime here in the next couple of weeks. But anyway, look at this here. As declared in verse 1, look what it says here. The word of the Lord came unto Hosea, the son of Berai, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. I want to show you here and draw your attention up here too. The chart that's on the on the TV here, you're going to find out that there are different. Where do we see? Where do we see Hosea at? Somebody is he on there? We're at. Right there. See Hosea, Hosea right here. This is where he is. Now we're talking about in Daniel's time. We're talking about we were talking about this area in here, the destruction of Jerusalem. All we talked about the Nehemiah all the way to here. But now when you start getting into the minor prophets, you see how that all of a sudden you go all the way back. And now you're speaking about a time that's over the kings. So if you don't have this chart, you won't understand where in the time frame are they writing and who are they writing to and the different and the different ones. So when he was talking about when he was talking about Hosea Talking about this one here. He talked about King Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, Hezekiah. So I would guess that he was probably to this this group here, this this tribe that would be uh, in, what, what, just looking at the board here. I'm not going to give it away. Which group, Judah or Judah or um, Israel? This one. Tell me which one is which. Judah, the kings of Judah, or the kings of Israel? Which one? This is a, this is a group of kings. This is a group of kings. Which one's weird? Tell me the color of Israel. What color? Purple. Okay, everybody who would say that the kings of Israel are... What color is that? Purple. Purple? Let me see your hands. Okay, all those who says that the kings of Judah... Are here on this line. Let me see your hands. Now, what's the giveaway? Color code. Oh, the color code. One's blue. One. That is the color. That is the. Okay. There's something more than that, though. Something more than that. The king, the 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 kings of Israel, fell at 722 BC, 
and the kings of Israel, they all went into a captivity with the Assyrians. The, northern, the southern kingdom continued how long? All the way down to Zedekiah at 536 B.C. at this time frame. Right in here. See what I mean? So you could just buy. So if Hosea was in the time of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, Hezekiah, who do you think he probably was going to? Who was he speaking to? Probably what group? Judah. Judah, the kings of Judah. So we, that's, see what I'm talking about? So let's look at some different things here. That um, Hosea declared in verse 1 as the author Hosea. He is the husband of Gomer. Look at it here in 1 verse 3. So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Debalim, which conceived and bare him a son. Now the names are going to be very important. Who's ever read the book of Hosea? Let me see your hands. All the way? Who, let's do it. Who has not read the book of Hosea? Let's see your hands. That's okay. That's all right. Look at this one here. So, as declared in verse 1, the, the date, the prophetic career of Hosea extended from 784 to 723 B.C. How many years is that? 50, uh, 61, 61 years. So now look up there on the board. See how long it was? See how long his career was when he prophesied? Doesn't it make sense now when you see that long bar by his name? The name of the book is named after its author, Hosea. In, um, the names Hoshea, or Hosea, Joshua, and Jesus are all derived from the same Hebrew word. That's where I get it, is Hoshea. See what there? Which, which means what? Salvation. salvation. As God's uh, messenger, Hosea offers salvation to the nation if they will turn from their idolatry and return to the Lord. To look at the theme and the purpose. Hosea was written to demonstrate the steadfast or unfailing love of God of it, uh, for Israel in spite of her continued unfaithfulness. Although Hosea's marital experience, the book shows us the heart of a loving and compassionate God who belongs, who longs to bless his people with the knowledge of himself along with the blessings that come to those who know him intimately. In keeping with the purpose, the theme of Hosea is a strong testimony against the northern kingdom because it had been unfaithful to its covenant relationship with the Lord the, uh, as demonstrated in its widespread moral corruption, both publicly and privately. Thus the prophet, prophet speaks to get his countrymen to repent, return with the contrite hearts of their, uh, of their patient and ever-loving God. The key word in Hosea is what? Harlot or holotry. Uh, harlotry. Ten times, nine times. Now when we talk about Hosea, here's something I want you to know about Hosea. Hosea is a story of a man who marries a woman by the name of Gomer. Gomer gives him three children, and they have different names that are given to the children in here. When we look at the names, the names of the children mean certain things, and what God decides to do with the, this story, he is showing his love for Israel or Judah uh, because of, and he uses the marital uh, experience as Hosea marries Gomer, and, and Gomer all of a sudden leaves home. She goes out and plays the part of a harlot. She's already had children, but God tells him to go marry, go find Gomer, bring her back, buy her back. He had to buy his own wife back. And, you know, she was on a, she was on a, she was being sold as a slave, sex slave. And uh, he buys her back, wraps her up, brings her home, and lives happily ever, ever after. So here's the story. God, the story is, the story is, just like Israel would leave God and he, she would play the, the harlot, go after other gods, leave, leave, leave her husband, and then what would happen is that God was showing as he went to buy, as Hosea went to buy Gomer, what did God have to do to be able to purchase us? How did he do it? How did he do it? He did it through Jesus Christ. You know, we were, we're bought with a price. See what I'm talking about? And has to go buy the harlot, and he brings her home, 
and we all live happily ever after, right? <laughs> so anyway, that that. But here's the thing. Here's the thing with the story of Hosea. Many people call it a love story. Many people call it, you know, just a lot of different things. But there's lessons that every one of these people had to do. And that's what Hosea had to do. It was a um, persevering, a persevering love. And he continued on to love this, uh, this woman. Look at this here. The key chapters, chapter 4 is a chapter. And we see how in the following the ways of idolatry... Israel left the knowledge of God's truth and became rejected as even priests. Key verses. Can we look at the key verses? Here, we're going to look at them. Uh, which one? Hosea 3, 1. Then said the Lord unto me, Go yet, love a woman, beloved of her friends, yet an adulteress, according to the love of the Lord, towards the children of Israel, who, who look to other gods and love flagons of wine. So God commands Hosea to take back his wife, Gomer. And that's what, he's, that's what he was commanded to do. Uh, you can see it over here. Look at uh, Hosea 1, chapter 1, verse 2. The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. And the Lord said unto Hosea, Go take unto thee a wife of whoredoms, the children of whoredoms, and for the land hath committed great whoredoms, departing from the Lord. He went and bought her. He married her, had children, and she left. Now he's told to go what? Go find her and bring her back. Isn't that crazy? And uh, so let's go ahead and pick it up here. Uh, chapter 4, verse 1. Is that where we Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord hath controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, no nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. So they had it completely turned away from God. And then here's that one I want to show you, Hosea 4 and 6. Look what he says here. You need to mark this in your Bible. Have you already marked that part, that yeah. verse? Yeah. We did that in our studies, didn't we? He says, my people are destroyed for what? Lack of knowledge. The other one says, my people are destroyed for what? The other verse that goes along with it. Lack of knowledge. My people go into captivity because of what? Lack of knowledge. Remember that one? Lack, uh, go into captivity. I think that was in Isaiah. Yeah, it is. Look at Isaiah 5 and 13. Let's do it together for those who don't know. Y'all ready? Where's Isaiah? Isaiah to our left or to our right? To the left. Let's just go back and find Isaiah. Y'all act like, y'all act like we never talked about this. You ready? Isaiah 5 and verse 13. Is that where it's at? These two go together. Y'all need to know this about deliverance, y'all. Isaiah 5, it comes before 16. Isaiah 5 and 13. Yeah, look at there. See, see what Isaiah 5 and 13 says? Therefore my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. And their honorable men are um, famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. Now, what is he saying here is there's a key. I want you to think about other things. These people literally went into captivity because they what had no knowledge. Knowledge of God or certain things right there. Well, there's people who go into captivity, Christians who go into captivity, God's people who go into captivity with demons. And they don't even realize they have no knowledge of the deliverance ministry that are going into captivity. See what I mean? And then what does it say over here in Hosea? My people are what? Destroyed for lack of knowledge. See what I'm getting at? So you can be destroyed for lack of knowledge. You can go into captivity for lack of knowledge. See what I'm getting at? So there's a lot of people, if you're ignorant about the deliverance ministry or what have you, you can be, you go into captivity. You can also be destroyed because of lack of knowledge. How many times I got to say it? Right? You turn on, you can say it. That makes sense. But it's in the Bible, you know. That's what I like about it. These are little things in the Bible. I got Isaiah five thirteen written here on that one, and then over here in Isaiah, I got Hosea four and six because they go together. You know, see what I mean? Nobody never really quotes them together like that. Okay, the other one we're looking at here is four verse six. That was it, and then eleven seven to nine. You ready? See what it says here. And, and my people are bent to backsliding from me. 
Now somebody says backsliding is not in the Bible. I want somebody to tell me backsliding is not in the Bible. Say it's not in the Bible. Okay, let's read this here then. Y'all ready? There are a lot of people who don't believe in backsliding. That, I mean, there's a whole denominations don't believe in it. Isn't that right? So which verse was I reading? And my people are bent to backsliding from me. Though they call them to the Most High, none at all would exalt him. So there's backsliding right there in Hosea. Uh, so let's go ahead and pick it up here. Christ is seen prophetically in Hosea, in that Hosea, the Messiah is presented as the Son of God and as the only Savior of his people and as the one who will ransom us from the dead and as one who lives with great compassion, as one who heals those who will return with him. So when we look at Hosea, let me go ahead and give you my little rendition of Hosea now. You ready? Here's mine. Here we go. Hosea, he wrote it somewhere else, 750. Um, 750 um, B.C. He came from the northern kingdom Israel. That's where he came from. Hadn't went into captivity yet. The only writing prophet to do so, but probably wrote in Judah after the fall of the northern kingdom. See what I'm talking about? That's why he was still there. He moved from one place and went to another place. Assyria destroyed Israel in Hoshea's reign in 722. Hosea receives the word of the Lord, who tells him to take an adulterous wife, Gomer. She will conceive unfaithful children. The names of the children are what? Jezreel, Loami, and the daughter Lo Ruhumah. Israel has been unfaithful like his wife and children and is to be punished as an adulteress. God tells him to go by Gomer back from slavery, which he does. God foretells the punishment of Israel, after which they seek David, her king. The priests have sinned and misled the people. The men have consorted with harlots and sacrificed with shrine prostitutes. Over and over, when you study, when you study these little minor prophets, this little paper that I gave you right here, those five things you're going to find in it, what are they? Warning of impending judgment, description of sin, description of judgment, call for repentance, a promise for future deliverance. Every one of them has that in it. That's, that's the, the, the beauty of what they have done here. So, when we look at this here, uh, they will, what they did, God will punish Israel because they offer human sacrifice, they kiss, they kiss calf idols, that's in Hosea, therefore they will be like the chaff, be like the morning dew that disappears, like chaff swirling from the, the threshing floor, like smoke escaping through a window. So he apparently promises redemption from death. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. So hey, when I started looking at this here, they will disappear like the morning dew. Now I didn't learn I didn't learn this here just till the other day. It, and I know y'all I know y'all all know it, but I didn't learn it till just the other day. So I know y'all all know it. But I did not know what hoarfrost was. Hoarfrost. H O A R Hoarfrost. Look it up. Hoarfrost. And what that is, it's it's in like in the mountains when the dew is when the dew is still on the leaves in the morning time, and when it gets all of a sudden real cold in the morning, that dew turns to frost, and that is hoarfrost, and it evaporates very quickly after that. Now I know y'all all know that. I didn't know that. I only know that from a man who does walking in the mountains, and he was telling me about. It. He said there ain't nothing more pretty. Then go in there, you, you're there, and there is no frost. And then all of a sudden, the temperature in the morning time, you know how to get real cold in the morning? Mm-hmm. Does anybody know it gets real cold in the morning time? Yeah. Right about what time? What about what, what time? Before right before it gets daylight mm-hmm. in the morning time, and that's when the frost hits. You know, if it's just right, and that is called what? Mm-hmm. Somebody said, I didn't know that. So you got, tw- look here. <laughs> how many minor prophets? Twelve. And what's horror frost? <laughs> Yeah, but well, but what comes to my, what comes to my mind there is when he when we were reading is that he he said that they would disappear like the morning dew, you know the hoarfrost it disappears just like that uh, when it happens in the morning time like that. Okay, that's that's the book of Ho- Hosea. Let's look at the next one. It's on your paper here. You got it. We're gonna go with um, we're doing all right so far, aren't we? We're gonna do with the book of Joel. 
Joel. Somebody, somebody, I want you to say this here. The J, I want you to say it with a Y. Ready? Say it. So, Yoel. Yoel. So, you'll hear some people use the word Yoel. I use Joel, but if you hear someone say uh, Yahweh, you hear someone say, uh, say like Jehovah, somebody might say Yahweh, or, you know, you know the J, it makes a what kind of sound? A Y. So, you, some people say Joel as what? Yoel. All right, so just just kind of helping you out. Don't freak out when they do that, or anything like that. Don't throw them. Don't 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 try to cast a demon out or anything. All right, you ready? Look at it here. The coming Joel is the coming of the day of Yahweh of God. Author is indicated. Look at here, indicated. Chapter one, verse one. <clears throat> The word of the Lord came to Joel, the son of Pethuel. So that's who it's, it's dated. The years 835 to 805. Look at it up here on the up here up here on the the timeline. Where are we at? Way over here, aren't we? See where Joel's at over here? And we'd have been all the way down this timeline. But all of a sudden, they scatter you all the way back. Isn't that crazy how the Bible does that? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, anyway, the name of the the name of the book, the Hebrew word for Joel means Yahweh is God. Anytime you have the E L on it, what does it always mean? E L on the name means what? No, Could be something to do with God. <laughs> Yahweh is God. The name is extremely appropriate in view of the message of Joel which emphasizes God as a sovereign one who is God of history, having all creation and nations under his power. What's the theme and purpose of Joel? It is this. Joel was a prophet to Judah, writing to them at the time of the terrible plague of locusts. Remember this here. Now, he compared this to future judgments. He spoke of the day of the Lord five times, referring to judgment. Spiritual deliverance. Somebody said, we can't go anywhere without this word, can we? Spiritual deliverance is the great central promise of the book of Joel. Joel had the promise of telling the nation that God would pour forth his spirit uh, upon all flesh. And two, let's look at it. Two, can we do it? Two, two what? 28? Yeah, I hope you got all the book of Joel, all. Joel 2, 28. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And upon my servants and upon my handmaids and those days will I pour out of my spirit. Same thing that's quoted in the book of Acts as well. 2.32 I just read, uh, 232 shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be Savior. And what does it say over in the book of Acts? Let's look at it in the book of Acts. Somebody look that over there for me up. Uh, are we going to find it? Acts 2. Somebody go over and find it to me. Acts chapter 2. Well, I know we haven't got it there yet, but... Acts chapter 2. Which one is it? Is that 21? Yeah, that's where it starts at. There it is, verse 21. You had it right. Acts 2, 21. Look what he says. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be what? What what does Joel say? Shall be delivered. So you see how how people look at being saved and being delivered? It should be the same thing. That makes sense? It's deliverance. uh, um, Peter probably had a problem with deliverance. Like a lot of them. He got straightened out on a lot of stuff though. He finally got straightened out on a lot, didn't he? Huh? Yeah, he did. Well, hello, Henry Schaefer here again. As your Bible teacher and the host of the program Old and New Testament Survey. I hope you've enjoyed the program. Now, you can reach me at henry at cwchrist.com. That's henry at cwchrist.com. If you've got any comments or got any questions, look forward to seeing you again. God bless.